Now, of course, there's much in our policy agenda that doesn't need legislation at all. High on our list of priorities is the much needed upgrade to our nation's transmission system. Our grid is not fit for purpose and our Rewiring the Nation program will make it so. Rewiring the Nation will help us get the renewable energy from where it's generated to where it'll be consumed. This will include, under our government, increasingly offshore wind. And it will help us manage the electricity system as we shift to a much higher renewable share of generation. They say the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine, and that's true everywhere. But across our country, it's normally blowing or shining somewhere. And improved transmission will help us get that renewable energy from wherever it's being generated at that time to where we need it. Now, we're fortunate as we embark on rewiring the nation that we have the blueprint ready to go. In fact, tomorrow, AEMO will release the 2022 Integrated Systems Plan, the final version of it. The ISP shows our energy mix continuing to change dramatically, predicting the step change scenario as the most likely. The prediction of this rate of change is informed not just by the impressive expertise in AEMO, but by consultation with over 1,500 stakeholders, including energy users and generators, governments, regulators and analysts. The sector's been honest about the pace of change in the market. The previous government was not, which has left us playing catch-up as we build out new generation. The pace of change we are already experiencing represents a massive need for new investment in flexible and firm capacity to complement renewables. That's the focus of the capacity mechanism I'm working with my state and territory colleagues to deliver, ensuring the market is sending the right signal for capacity and reliability we need as we undertake this unprecedented level of energy transformation. Let me be very clear, the capacity mechanism our government delivers in partnership with the states and territories will be utterly consistent with our emissions reduction goals and will encourage the use of new technology, technologies and renewables. The ISP lays out the scale of this over the next 30 years. Electricity demand to nearly double across the grid, storage capacity to increase by a factor of 30, and we already know well the task in transmission. Billions in job creating investment to connect Australian households and industry to affordable, firm renewables. Tomorrow's ISP will set out the timelines for delivery of major pieces of transmission infrastructure. It'll set the dates for critical projects like the Marinus Link that will connect Tasmania's hydro to the mainland with new undersea cables, and Hume Link and the second interconnector between Victoria and New South Wales that will allow electricity from renewable and dispatchable sources to flow from where it's generated to where it's needed in our homes and industries. Let me say this is a world-class document. It's a roadmap for the transmission revolution our country so desperately needs. And so I welcome the ISP final document being released tomorrow. The only problem with the ISP is that it wasn't properly funded. Under previous arrangements, it would have taken too long to implement this very good plan. Rewiring the Nation will fix that. Guided by EMO, the CEFC and my department, Rewiring the Nation will enable the new government to get on with the job and implement the ISP fully. I look forward to working with my fellow energy ministers to modernise the grid, implement the ISP and provide the country with more renewables, more transmission and more storage. Now, important as the ISP is, it's not enough. It only covers electricity transmission. Our transformation needs to be more than transmission. We need an integrated national plan which covers all the investments needed for a renewable economy. The plan is to cover what storage we need and where. It needs to cover what green hydrogen we need and the pipelines we need to get it around the country. It needs to cover all the necessary investment. It needs to cover the vital enablers to that program, like the upskilling of our workforce and making things in Australia again. I was delighted when the State and Territory Energy Ministers, Labor, Liberal and Green, all represented around the table, unanimously agreed to work with me on exactly that plan at our recent meeting. I've described it as the ISP on steroids. Now, the best time to start working on that plan was 10 years ago, and the second best time is now. And that's exactly what we're doing. And so this vital work begins as we begin this important national project.